Good evening and welcome to MTV News Update for today, Tuesday, January 9, 2018. In the news tonight, Dr. Sam Silenton is back as the advisor to SOPU. Economist claims the oil and gas sector threatens the fisheries industry. GNBS hires specialists to develop standards for the oil and gas industry. And in court, pass the granted bail for allegedly raping a member of his congregation. To the details of these and other stories, I'm Sandy Ramutar, thanking you for joining us. To begin tonight's newscast, we tell you that the advisor to the Special Organized Crime Unit is back to continue his work at that unit. Dr. Sam Silenton will now end in 2020. Find out more in this report. The Special Organized Crime Unit has been given the opportunity to work again with Dr. Sam Silenton. Dr. Silenton was contracted by the British government to give advice on the unit's work to investigate anti-money laundering, countering the financing of terrorism and other serious organized crime as necessary. During a press conference with Dr. Sittleton at the British Ambassador's residence, it was highlighted that he would be continuing where he left off in 2017. They had a lot of cases at one time whenever I was here and they did have to gather up the evidence for that and interview people as well. So there's, sometimes there is a, a lull because you're, you're, you're involved in a number of different cases and you're, you're, there's a lot of admin work as well, you know, administrative work uh, behind closed doors. But, but I kept tabs on what they were doing and I know that they were involved in a number of other searches uh, and, and cases, uh, particularly down um, uh, near the border. So um, I can't remember the name of the cases, but um, they were involved in, in other cases which, which which are, were new to them and new to me. Um, but I think one of the uh, reasons for having this sustainability, six weeks uh, every three months or every couple of months, uh, allows enough time to give good, uh, good guidance and allow them then to use their own initiative uh, and to build on that progressively over the next two and a half years. Uh, and hopefully at the end of that time that there will be uh, a marked improvement on that um, they will be totally self-sufficient uh, to conduct their own, their own affairs. Dr. Sittleton said when he left last year, those cases which were sent to the police legal advisor is still not completed. He believes that the police legal advisor needs to have a special prosecutor to deal with the matters at hand. The unit advisor also believes that it would be unfair to those persons who are being investigated and also to the investigators. And I think that needs to be addressed because uh, there is a uh, abusive process remit in, in a court procedure which allows dispensation in sentencing uh, and penalty if it's gone on too long. Dr. Sitlinton will be deployed to Soko for a total of six months in 2018 as he will be working in Guyana for six weeks in each quarter. Following that, he will then be deployed to the unit over a 24 weeks period from April 2018 to March 2019 and April 2019 to March 2020. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. With the imminent oil and gas sector on the cards of the government, the Guyana National Bureau of Standards will be contracting a specialist for the development of standards to regulate the industry. Details in this report. The Guyana National Bureau of Standards will be hiring a specialist for guidance on the development of standards for the oil and gas sector. These standards will be put in place to ensure local companies working under the industry are in compliance with the regulations. This is according to the director of the GNBS, Cadel Walcott Boswick. And also we'll look at avenues for this year in terms of developing what we have as a petroleum code to see what standards are needed for that sector. Because we haven't heard much talk about the type of standards required to regulate that sector. So we're pursuing the 
avenue of hiring a specialist to guide us in that direction during 2018 so that we can so be informed as the type of standards needed and how we are going to work with that sector. The requirements for the specialists will be sent through a proposal to the business ministry. A budget will also be sent to the ministry for the allocation of funds. Coupled with this, the GNBS will be partnering with the Trinidadian company to aid in the development of the standard. That country has been handpicked because of its experience in the petroleum sector. The GNBS will also be developing a national petroleum code. Outspoken economist Raymond Gaskin is of the belief that Guyana is developing the oil and gas sector while risking the debt of the fisheries sector. This he says that there is no provision in a petroleum agreement that speaks to safeguarding the fisheries sector. Nikhil Jonu filed this report. Local economist and political commentator Raymond Gaskin during an exclusive interview said Guyana is at risk of losing its fisheries sector by developing the oil and gas sector. Gaskin added that within the Stabrook block, which is approximately 120 miles offshore, large-scale fishing activities are ongoing. He noted that if there is an oil spill, the aquatic animals would suffer tremendously. That is where we have the fisheries sector operating right there. The entire, I would say most of the fishery sector of Guyana, the prawns and the, 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 the snapper and all the export produce and all of the local produce, right there occupying the same territory as, this, as the rig. And so long as there's a spill there, you can bet your last dollar that the fish will, the fish will die or the fish will go away. Gaskin added that the petroleum agreement signed in 2016 by Minister of Natural Resources Ravel Trotman does not adequately provide any mechanism in case there is an oil spill. He noted that the agreement is silent on what steps to be taken. However, Article 28 speaks to the protection of the environment, but that too is not very clear, according to Gaskin, because in the event of an oil spill, if the contractor cannot clean up the spill, then the minister responsible for the sector has to complete the cleanup exercise. Gaskin made a mockery of that article. If the contractor cannot do it within a certain period of time, then the minister, the minister must do it. And the minister must send a bill to the contractor to be reimbursed the cost of dealing with it. Now tell me, how can a political minister, member of cabinet, be responsible and to take on this responsibility for dealing with spills and pollution? This is a technical thing. Exxon people, they are the big technical experts, internationally recognized with the technology and the engineering and the experience to deal with this thing. And in this agreement, the minister signed a paper, a document, which says, if you can't do it, I'll do it. That's what he signed to. It's right here. If, if, I, if you can do it, I'll do it and I'll send a bill to you. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. More news still ahead, do stay tuned. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. If it's not one thing, it's another. Last year, we barely avoid this connection for the Christmas. Now, we got to deal with estimated bills. Because I hardly at home, and I left him again. Oh, move for no teeth, man. Come and carry me in my phones. Granny, you got to get up to date with the tent. So, GWI released this new app that allows you to read your own meter and send it to them so they won't have to estimate your bills anymore. 
Plus, this app bought for this. It allows you to report a leak right away just by taking a picture and sending it to them. So Auntie Jane next door could report her leak. What a thing! Bye! You gonna gotta show me how to use this app? Download the GWI customer app from the App Store or Play Store. Sign up with Facebook or use the Create an Account option. Once signed in, add your GWI account by entering the reference number found on your bill. With the GWI customer app, you can check your account balance and payment due date. Report a leak by taking a picture and adding a description. Submit meter readings by taking pictures and entering the numbers in black on the dial. If you're unable to submit your reading, choose from a list of reasons why and have it addressed by GWI's technical team. GWI is a customer app. Download free from the App Store or Play Store now. Eh uh eh, -uh. BB is way going with so much Windex for clean windows. All them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi girl, mind your own business. I got big plans. But BB, your house don't even have windows. Eh, uh, girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carrying me down by the window factory when he come home. It Eccles, it name Bison. Like you ain't know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Bison got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Bison Windows and Doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Good news update, welcome back. Local attorney and oil consultant Charles Ramson Jr. is urging the government to move faster to establishing an auditing unit for the oil and gas sector. He claims that Guyana will be losing billions. More from Nikhil Jondu. Okay. Attorney Charles Ramson Jr. during an exclusive interview said Guyana stands to lose billions of dollars from the petroleum contract. However, the government cannot alter the current agreement according to Article 32 of the contract, which speaks to the stability of agreement. Which direction that you want to take us in, we know where we're willing to go and that you can't divide and conquer us. And this has always been the modus operandi of uh, the foreign countries as well as foreign companies, multinational companies. They know that if they break... Uh, the sections and fronts into different segments. It's division and they, they are able to attack and get the best deals on that basis. It should have been a unified front from the very beginning. Inviting the opposition to say, look, we're about to go and negotiate. And as we are about to go and negotiate, this is what this is what is in play. What do you think? How do you think we should go about doing it? If they know that that we're working together, they're going to start to think, okay, we have to design a different strategy because it's more complicated when it's uh, the, the, the group that you're negotiating with, negotiating with has a, a, a stronger base. It is against this backdrop that Ramson Jr. stated that the government should have a more robust auditing mechanism for the upcoming oil and gas sector. He added that the department that would have oversight of the day-to-day -day work of the sector will have to detect loopholes. Ramson believes that the auditing department cannot start its work when production begins in 2020. Those works will have to commence forthwith leading up to production. You got to beef up your auditing department right now. So all of those persons that you, you should be training you should start that training process right now. It should have started two years ago. 
right? The moment that you discovered oil, you should have started a program where you need to know how are you going to be able to audit what comes out from the ground. So you beef up your auditing program. The second thing you need to do is to make sure that you have designed your sovereign wealth fund. Your sovereign wealth fund should be where it is that your real revenue goes. Once you've done that, all of the steps as to preparation for first oil is starting to come in place. None of those things are happening. They've got their draft that should have been released at the end of 2016. They're now saying in 2018, you know, it's still with the Ministry of Finance. Give me a break. Article 9 of the Petroleum Agreement, which speaks to records, reports and information, states that the minister through duly appointed representatives must give a seven-day notice to the oil company to observe the petroleum operations. This outspoken economist and political commentator Raymond Gaskin states is ridiculous. He claims that ExxonMobil can siphon off Guyana's resources without being caught as no one is there manning the company's operations. To remedy this, Gaskin affirmed that the government must have inspectors present at the operation site on a 24-hour basis. We have to have at a minimum about 100 inspectors out there living out there with them every day on three shifts to check every single drop of oil that comes out from the bottom of the ocean because that's how we're getting paid. And this whole nonsense that Mr. Trotman and his sign to that he agrees to give them seven days notice to go out there, it's entirely ridiculous. In this country, the, the tax man could come to you any time, any day to check you. You can go in Regis Street, Water Street, any street. You can go in the bush. You can go to, to uh, all the gold mines, anywhere, and check anything, because that's how we get paid. He doesn't have to give, no, the tax man doesn't have to give notice that he come to check you for VAT or for tax or for gold or for production. And here you got to give them seven days notice that he's coming out there. Are you kidding me? It's entirely ridiculous. That site visit is covered by the contractor's own expense to inspect all assets records and data kept by the contractor relating to such petroleum operations. The article also added that the minister cannot unduly interfere with the contractor's petroleum operations. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The war against the second most common cancer in women and cervical cancer is being waged by the Guyana Cancer Institute. The institute is offering free pap smears through January. Here is more. Cervical cancer occurs when abnormal cells on the cervix grow out of control. The cervix is a lower part of the uterus that opens into the vagina. Most cervical cancer is caused by a virus called human papillomavirus or HPV. You can get HPV by having sexual contact with someone who has it. It is the second most common cancer in women. As such, the director of the Cancer Institute, Dr. Said Ghazi, said cervical cancer will be placed at the forefront of the Institute as he claimed 33,000 women die annually in the Americas with the disease. The Cancer Institute will be offering free pap smears throughout the month of January. Dr. Ghazi is imploring all sexual active women to get detected early and those who have tested positive should seek urgent treatment. What we want to announce right now is that throughout this month, Cancer Institute is doing pap smears free. We invite every woman who is living in Georgetown or anywhere. They can come here and get themselves a screen. If they're more than 20, 20 21 years, sexually active, you know, it's, 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 it's a monster which is out there because it is caused by a virus, HPV virus. Which, uh, which is very common you know, out there. Oncologist Dr. Sayan Charbarti said the unit has tested about 80 patients last year and has treated about 50 of them. Dr. Charbarti also urged persons to be cognizant of the symptoms, which include abnormal bleeding and vaginal discharge and pain during sex. But what pap smear does is, pap smear actually takes scrapings out of the cervix and vagina, not painful. It's something like just putting a swab on the cervix and vagina, taking the secretions, putting out a slide and seeing it under a microscope, right? So pap smear is more, more specific in finding 
a precancerous or a cancerous lesion. The countrywide campaign to test women for cancer will continue with regions 6, 7 and 8 being targeted. Cervical cancer can often be successfully treated when it is found early. It is usually found at a very early stage through a pap test. According to the financial advisor to the Special Organized Crime Unit, Dr. Sam Siltenton, while there is significant emphasis on the role of SOCU, it is even more important that corporations and banks do their part in reporting any suspicious money laundering activity to the relevant authority. Nishan Gomes Cornelius filed this report. Dr. Sidlington noted that in the past year, he had made several important recommendations to various banking administrations on how they can monitor, identify, gather information, and report on such activities to the relevant authority. It is an obligation of a bank to provide information relating to uh, STRs, suspicious transaction reports, suspicions of money laundering or drug trafficking. And they make those reports to the FIU. Um, there is an ongoing case currently, so I can't comment on that part of your question. Uh, suffice to say that the Financial Action Task Force recommendations, which all other 49 countries have enacted in their legislation, obliges banks and financial institutions, uh, high-value dealers, casinos, lawyers, accountants, to make those reports. If you don't make those reports, you then uh, uh, stand, the, stand the, the potential to be prosecuted for failing to make a disclosure. While SUCO's mission is to investigate and expose all forms of money laundering activities within Guyana, Dr. Sidlington noted that there are some minor obstacles that have slowed down the hearing of some cases. In relation to a particular case which involves the Guyana Bank for Trade and Industry and SUCO's continuous efforts to have that bank release important documents to the unit for investigation, Dr. Sidlington noted that the magnitude of that case which is not limited to Guyana, could have significant consequences with the Central Bank of Guyana. Nonetheless, the investigative expert noted that fighting the issue of crime and money laundering is everyone's business. It's not unique. It's not a unique problem to Guyana, uh, and it's being addressed in, in other countries. Uh, but the problem is, and this is a very serious problem for Guyana, is this GBTI a case uh, has international press and that has consequences on the Central Bank of Guyana because the FATF, the mutual valuations, will mark Guyana down because of their non-cooperation, particularly in the financial uh, uh, structure. So uh, I think, you know, sometimes, sometimes institutions read into uh, things too deeply and sometimes they put up barriers not to do something as opposed to trying to be more positive and trying to collaborate and cooperate with other institutions. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Local government election is slated to be held in November. In this regard, the Minister of Communities, Ronald Bull, can assure the public that preparations are being made to facilitate the election hiccup. Here again is the Shana Gomes, Cornelius. According to the Minister of Communities, Ronald Bulkan, the next local government election is scheduled to be held in early November. No, but there's a, there's a, there's a time frame. It's from the, the legislation allows for the elections to be held between the 1st of November and the 7th of December. But the expectation is that it will be held um, early within that period, probably early November, because so as not to... Um, clash probably with the national budget which might be presented in late November. 
Once held, this year's local government election will be the second one orchestrated under the APNU AFC administration since entering public office. It will also be the second one since 1994. Article 7 to 1 of the Constitution states that local government is a vital aspect of democracy and shall be organized so as to involve as many people as possible in the task of managing and developing the communities in which they live. It is in that regard that a said article in the Constitution stipulates that Parliament shall provide for a countrywide system of local government through the establishment of organs of local democratic power as an integral part of the political organization of the state. Some of the major criteria for having a local government elections are firstly to improve the local environment, providing and developing local open spaces and recreational facilities, setting strategic policy direction, preparing annual plans, budgets, and long-term council community plans, administering responsibilities under laws and regulations, among other responsibilities. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Coming up, one angel makes it clear that no government will silence him. And Safai resident facing issues after neighbor builds septic tank in the alleyway. Introducing our new brand of all-weather fiberglass rocking chairs for complete relaxation. We supply quality, durable, and low-maintenance indoor and outdoor table and chairs for your patio, restaurants, cafeteria, reception area, and much more. So sit back and enjoy quality products from FiberTech with guaranteed factory warranty. All across our nation, Guyana, we see it in your life. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens available in tinted or clear complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing! I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. This is MTV News Update. Thank you for staying tuned. Executive member of the People's Progressive Party, Von Edgel, believes that the government is out to punish him. Apart from the miscalculation in his suspension dates, he is adamant that the Privileges Committee will find some way to discipline him for claiming that about $1 billion will be spent on government minister salaries for five years. Yannis Abrams filed this report. Opposition parliamentarian Juan Edgel believes after his suspension from the National Assembly has been completed, 
the Privilege Committee will develop false evidence and find him culpable of the statement he made. The opposition MP had claimed that the public's purse will be battered as approximately $1 billion will be given to ministers in salaries during the government's five years. On May 29, the Privileges Committee of the National Assembly summoned EJO on the counts of massive corruption and deliberate avoidance of the Procurement Acts and its accompanying processes involving billions of taxpayers' dollars spent by the current administration. The People's Progressive Party Member of Parliament said he was scheduled to have a meeting with the committee on June 5, but it was cancelled. When I left the Privileges Committee, I was made to understand that there was no further need for my attendance at the Privileges Committee. It is now for the committee, having received my evidence and provision of documentation and calculations, to deliberate to determine their outcomes. I have not heard from them since, but I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you under these circumstances, I expect a meeting of the Privileges Committee very, very soon. I just said through this committee, the government is trying to silence him. However, he made it categorically clear that he will not be silenced. This issue came about when the government had raised their salaries up to 50%. Ejo went about his individual investigation, which provided him with the information that by the end of the APNU AFC's first term, the Treasury will be stripped of almost $1 billion. Reporting for MTV's News Updates, I am Yanis Abrams. A resident who has been living in Afield Safari for 19 years is pleading with the relevant authorities to remove her neighbor from occupying government reserves. The owner of the lots has claimed the alleyway and has enclosed his fence around the alley. Yanis Sabrams with this story. A resident who resides in Afield Safari is asking for the Central Housing and Planning Authority for help as her neighbor who is currently building a structure has claimed the alleyway. Paula McCallman Jones of 313 Afield Sophia said that she has complained to the government agency about the issue for over a year, but it is yet to be resolved. I went to housing whole last year. I kept running. I went to Mr. Saul. I went to City Council. Up to yesterday, I went to um, I went to housing and it and um, they give it off to somebody else. I have pictures and these people still continue and they. The woman's neighbor, who owns three lots, has since built a septic tank in the alleyway. She further mentioned that she was told to lead a pipe from her septic tank to the front of her yard. It is going to affect, affect me now because my, all my waste is supposed to be going at the back and he's telling me, the contractor, that I have to put a four-inch four pipe and lead it to my front of my yard. Right, and I have a concrete fence and now they're doing the neighbor's fence high, 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 so I wouldn't have access. McCallman Jones claims that she was verbally abused by the construction workers who told her that the government does not care about the fire residents. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. As the National Assembly is set to reconvene on January 10, Opposition Member of Parliament Juan Ejo believes the government has a sinister plan. He was set to table the motion pertaining to the Georgetown prison fire and jailbreak. Here's more. Opposition Member of Parliament Juan Ejo says he has been advised not to attend the sitting on January 10 unless the Parliament Office and the Speaker recognizes their error. So at our level, we have agreed that I will hand over that motion to Madam Tashira, which the clerk and the assembly has been so um, informed. And it's now on the order paper still where the mover will be Madam Gail Tashira, which has happened before where there was a mover who was absent and that motion was handed over to another member to carry it forward. Gail Deshera will be moving the Georgetown prison fire and jailbreak motion on behalf of him. This follows his suspension from the 79th sitting of the National Assembly in December last year. Because we quickly recognized that 
they might be a sinister move of the government. Placing the motion on the order paper, the mover of that motion is Bishop Juan Edgel. So if the motion is on the order paper and the mover is suspended, then the, then the likelihood is that they will want to say that motion cannot be discussed because the mover is suspended. And you have to see the sinister move in that regard. Edgel says the motion will be calling on the government to accept collective responsibility of the George Young prison fire. He asserted that a sinister plan might be in the making by the government, which he believes will be encouraged by the Speaker. The opposition MP's suspension remains in effect, as he was told that his four-day suspension started from the 80th sitting. More news ahead, stay tuned. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, every and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Pio's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. Like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody, Everybody know the secret. secret. <laughs> You're tuned to News Update. Welcome back. A young Bartitian is a prime example of beauty with brains. The 2017 Miss Bartica Regatta winner, Gabriel Chapman, has embarked on a monumental task of empowering young women. Yannis Abrams with the details. 22-year-old Gabrielle Chapman has found her calling. She is now the founder of a girl empowerment group called Girl Build Girl Foundation. On December 21, 2017, the Girl Build Girl Foundation was launched with various females showcasing their talent. Chapman, who is Miss Bartica Regatta 2017, has created this foundation to empower young females. The University of Guyana student believes that the foundation will give girls self-confidence with the different indoor activities planned. All we need is somebody to talk to and having that sort of that sort of bond that we want to create amongst ourselves. They will feel like a, a sense of belonging. They will feel more encouraged, more motivated to do positive things. So basically we're going to be like their motivation, encouraging them to do positive things. So the difference that it's going to make, we're going to see the girls, you know, making better decisions, life decisions, um, acting differently in community, the girls from the foundation. Uh, they're going to be like more versatile. They're going to be... Um, because we will be having them involved in different activities, different skill training stuff, we're gonna, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna change their lives. I, I believe it will. The foundation 
which caters for girls ages 14 to 25, has been endorsed by the Minister of Social Cohesion, Dr. George Norton. The Girl Bill Girl Foundation, I believe that it's going to make a prodigious difference in the lives of our girls. And I can assure them that it's definitely something that they would want their daughter or daughters to be a part of. Because, you know, too many times we see our girls, you know, following the wrong company or getting involved in wrong activities. But being a part of the foundation, we are looking out for each other. Girls can join by going on the foundation's Facebook page or Instagram account. Let's talk with Gabby for more information. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. According to the Minister of Communities, Ronald Wilkan, the Regional Agriculture and Commercial Exhibition will now be an annual event. The exhibition is geared towards empowering farmers and business owners in their respective fields of work while paving the way for economic development. Here is more. Though several regions during 2017 did not get to participate in the Regional Agriculture and Commercial Exhibition called RACE, Minister of Communities Ronald Bulkan during a telephone interview with this newscast related that it is the mission of the Ministry of Communities, the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Business to have all the regions in Guyana partake in the Agriculture Commercial Exhibition. Minister Bulkan verified that the exhibition is now set to be an annual one, which seeks to provide business persons and agro-processors an avenue to showcase their products and services at the local level. With that in mind, Minister Bulkan reassured, in addition to the regional agriculture and commercial exhibition being held annually, the National Regional Development Consultative Committee, another brainchild of the government, is also to be held annually. Okay, well, some of the regions missed out in 2017, but in 2018, or henceforth, every region will have their race, um, their, you know, their respective races annually. Um, in this regard, there is, um, there is a coordinating forum called the National Regional Development Consultative Committee that was first held last year, uh, that, that also is, it will be an annual event, and it's being held on the 19th of this month, that is week, next week, Friday. President David Granger, during one of his rare press conferences back in December 2017, expounded on the success of the race exhibition. According to him, the exhibition achieved its goal of assisting to develop Guyana's agriculture sector by highlighting the availability of markets locally, regionally, and internationally. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. GTT has partnered with Pulse Entertainment and has launched its MASH Fitness Camp for persons to get fit in time for MASH Money 2018. Kipani Jordan filed this report. GTT has partnered with Pulse Entertainment to launch a fitness camp to help persons to get in shape in time for Mash Romani 2018. It is anticipated that the Pulse band, in combination with GTT, will be the biggest band on the road. That band is expected to be comprised of 2,000 revelers. Minister of Social Cohesion with Responsibility of Culture, Youth and Sport, Dr. George Norton, stated that the move proves that GTT, being one of the country's largest corporate entity, is keen on preserving Guyana's culture and heritage. Well, as I said in my presentation, that GTT is a good example of a corporate citizen in the sense that they have always been on board. And the fact that they are about one of the first men to come just tells us that they certainly are blazing the trail. And I'm happy for them. I would like to congratulate them. Pulse Entertainment owner, Robbie Singh expressed his excitement over the initiative. You're going to jump with Pulse Mash Band and GTT. You're definitely going to need to be fit because we're going to go right through. We have a, a lot of FET set up for you guys, a lot of workout and a lot of party match day and an after FET. So if you look at our calendar, the amount of events and the amount of things we're going to do, you need to get fit for that. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. Stay tuned for Court Rangda, the Demar Harbour Bridge schedule, as well as the Guyana Stock Exchange. If it's not one thing, it's another. Last year, we barely avoided this connection for the Christmas. Now, we got to deal with estimated bills. Because I hardly at home, and I left him again open for no thief. I can't carry me my phones. 
this. Brian, you got to get up to date with the times. So GWI released this new app that allows you to read your own meter and send it to them so they won't have to estimate your bills anymore. Plus, this app bought for days, it allows you to report a leak right away just by taking a picture and sending it to them. So Auntie Jane next door could report her leak. What a thing! Bye! You're gonna have to show me how to use this app! Download the GWI customer app from the App Store or Play Store. Sign up with Facebook or use the Create an Account option. Once signed in, add your GWI account by entering the reference number found on your bill. With the GWI customer app, you can check your account balance and payment due date. Report a leak by taking a picture and adding a description. Submit meter readings by taking pictures and entering the numbers in black on the dial. If you're unable to submit your reading, choose from a list of reasons why and have it addressed by GWI's technical team. GWI is a customer app. Download free from the App Store or Play Store now. Our Mohan Supermarket is your one-stop shop for everything you need. Our Mohan Supermarket carries your entire favorite brand name goods as well as many of the locally produced goods at the lowest prices. Groceries, toiletries, confectionaries, household items, personal care items, fresh meats, all alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages at unbeatable prices. Spend $7,500 and more and receive a free gift while stocks last. Pay your bills at Bill Express, also money transfer at Western Union, all at one convenient location. Visit us today at 36 to 37 New Road, Fridden Hoop, West Coast, Demerara. Telephone numbers 2540334 or 2540666. For delivery, check out Top Notch Taxi right next door, 24 hour service. Telephone numbers 2541324 or 2541325. All across our nation, Guyana, we see it in your lives. The future growing even stronger. GPTI, all eyes on Guyana skies as the voices of our people. what went down at the Georgia Magistrates Courts on Tuesday, January 9. Two Canal No. 2 Pool the West Bank Demerara men appeared before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan, charged with conspiracy to traffic cocaine and bribing a customs anti-narcotic unit officer. Rajesh Kisundial, called Paddle, was not required to plead to the conspiracy charge. According to the police, between April 1, 2016 and April 21, 2016, at Lot 37 Yarrow Cabra, Linden Suzdike Highway, he conspired with others to traffic 48.554 kilograms of cocaine that was hidden in sheets of plywood. Meanwhile, Kisun Dial, along with Sham Kumar Hari Prashad, 38, also of Canal No. 2 Polder, were jointly charged for bribing a customs anti-narcotic unit officer. Particulars of the charge allege that on January 5, 2018, at Homestretch Avenue, Georgetown, with intent to pervert the administration of the law, they offered Lyndon Thompson, an officer of the Customs Anti-Narcotic Unit, the sum of $1,495,000 for the release of Kisun Dial who was in custody pending an investigation into a trafficking narcotic matter. The duo denied the charge when it was read to them. The men were remanded to prison until January 25. Meanwhile, a 32-year-old pastor of Diamond East Bank Demerara appeared before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan, charged with raping one of his female members of his congregation. The matter against the pastor was heard on camera. 
The man was released on $350,000 bail and the matter is adjourned until January 18. According to reports, the man is a pastor of a church in Parafate Harmony, West Bank Demerara, and during the month of October 2017, he invited the woman to his home for counseling, where he reportedly raped her. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. The Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 755. Let's turn our attention to the Demer Harbour Bridge schedule. That's all we have for you in our newscast tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Dr. Sam Silinton is back as the advisor to SOPU. Economist claims the oil and gas sector threatens the fisheries industry. GNBS, the highest specialist, to develop standards for the oil and gas industry. And in court, to pass a granted bail for allegedly raping a member of his congregation. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Wednesday, January 10. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar, thanking you for watching. Have a good night.